welcome to Chinwag Central with Jem Turner and Carrot Beckett and Miro Griffiths. I think we should do one of those things where we go 10, 9, 8, 7, all right, so in a minute, and then Jem... From 10. All right, from 5, 5. 10, 9, 8. It's, 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 okay, stop it, it's too much. Well, it's, it's welcome anyway. to Chinwag Central episode two and what's our focus today Jem? Today our focus is life hacks and if you don't know what a life hack is well we were just trying to come up with it and we basically said anything that makes life either a little bit easier or doing things in another way to make it a bit mm. more productive doing things differently then we deem that as a life hack. Before we get into our life hacks, we're very keen to hear how everybody is. So do please let us know where, Gem? Down below in the comments. Down below in the comments. But how are you and how is Miro? So shall we start with um, you, Gem? How, are you, have you, how have you been doing this week? Well, we've got a bit of a change of scenery. As you can mm. see, I'm in bed. I've got my lights. I'm a bit injured. I've oh, got no. my bones and we've got a brittle broken bones situation. I'm oh, okay. Dear. Um, but it means resting and it means keeping still, which I'm not very good at. So we're still carrying on, we're still business as usual, but we're just resting. So I'm all right, but I'm not very good at resting. No. Has it been very sore, Gem? Yeah, I think even though you know what's coming. It's still a shock when you do it. Um, so I'm just trying to go through it, live through it, and keep doing what I'm doing. And, you know, if I need to rest, then so be it. And we're in lockdown anyway, so at least I'm not missing out on things. And we can Is the owl it. keeping you company? Yeah, exactly. I love that owl. He's gorgeous. She's gorgeous. Got a little yeah. mate here. Yes. Um, very pink, which I realised, like... It was very accidental, but, you know. Legally blonde-esque. It's very glam. It's very well, glam. Now. well, we hope that you get better soon and that you're in less pain, Gem. Thank you. Um, sorry to hear about that. How are you, Nero? What's your week been like? My week's been okay. It was, uh, it was busy with, with writing this week. Um, mm -hmm. Some interesting ideas developing uh, in relation to things that are happening at the moment. Uh, and uh, of course, the weekend has been one of relaxation. Uh, nothing to do with uh, injuries, I have to say. But uh, but I've just been spending most of my time. Uh, I'm glad to chocolate. hear. Well, yes, eating <laughs> chocolate and uh, and watching films. I watched five films on Saturday. I was very proud of myself. So. My goodness, I imagine fueled by chocolate. What's your favourite chocolate? Is there a chocolate of choice? Do you remember the? Uh, was it what was it called? Fries cream. The like the dark yeah. chocolate with, with kind of minced uh mint inside. Yes. Is yeah. my favourite. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Nice. Okay, well, we shall perhaps ask you to choose just one of the films you enjoyed. Tell us a name of one of them. So we've been watching. Um well, could I I've seen all these films, so I was actually trying to introduce I'm trying to introduce Emma to all the films that she's never seen that i think Emma is your partner your girlfriend yeah, my partner emma uh so we uh, i tell you what she really enjoyed the truman show i was oh, i was happy yeah. with jim carrey which i thought was really interesting because obviously it was filmed a while ago but you see so many connections with the idea of reality tv uh, yes in, uh, free society which i thought was really interesting it does speak to the contemporary doesn't it in some interesting yeah, that film as well brilliantly acted tell us how you are yes i'm fine thank you very much i'm uh Keeping well, keeping busy, um, inventing store cupboard recipes, and uh, generally just staying positive in these difficult times is how I would describe it. And I'm very, very grateful to my dear friends such as you two and many more who are keeping in great touch. And I think that helps a lot. So thank you. I should, we should oh. say as well, thank you to all our uh, listeners and and viewers from last last time. There was, there well, was we good... well we're recording this, aren't we? The the day after we launched, and we were, well, I was flabbergasted. I shouldn't have been because knowing you two already have a a fan base, I'm not surprised. But over a hundred views, uh -huh. over 
point. I think that's that's good news for Chinwag Central. Absolutely. Although, yeah, there were a few comments telling me that I should have known about Juan Juan, uh, which I, which well, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to put them on my list to listen to. I thought they were called During During, so there you go. <laughs> well. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. So yes, there was some good feedback. And also, I'm really delighted to say that we already have two listeners who have proposed life hacks and we're going to actually start with one of those aren't we and we're going to end with another so um shall we shall we start by having a look at one of our listeners al who has sent in a suggestion about how perhaps to keep fit and active this is a former student of mine a university of leeds alumni um al who has been um, doing exercise using a kind of reality, uh, virtual reality headset in some way. It looks very exciting. Now, I think we've had to remove the music, haven't we, for copyright reasons. I think we can say what the music is, can't we? Which is people should imagine that Al is exercising to um, Kung Fu fighting, which I think is a very upbeat kind of song. So let's have a look at Al doing his thing. It's quite small, isn't it, on the screen? But what are we seeing? We're seeing. We're so seeing... It's, a head, it's a headset, and Al is moving towards the shapes, or even to either move away from the shapes or hit the shapes using his controls. Um, and obviously, that's causing a lot of physical activity, which, yeah. uh, which whilst being immersed within uh, the game. Or the virtual experience so we're kind of seeing on the main part of the screen what al is actually seeing which is um lots of little boxes flying towards him which i think he is required to hit that's the game isn't it absolutely he's obviously got a headset on and some kind of clever technology um, that he's holding in each hand and is moving around in a quite vigorous manner it looks to me well it looks like some of the shapes you have to actually dodge so whilst, oh, also right. hitting, so whilst hitting some of the boxes, uh, which yeah. are flying towards towards him, he then yeah. has to move his body away from the the um, the, the, the shields. Uh, ah, right, the, right, 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 right. The walls in order yeah. not to be uh, hit by them. That's wow. I don't know what I don't know I don't know what, I don't know what happens if you do get hit by them. Uh, maybe do you think I'll that think. looks cool, Jem? Yeah, and I can um, I can imagine for somebody say like ourselves in wheelchairs, this mm. virtual reality would be really good for experiences that we're not really used to. So it looks like cool technology. Well, it does. I mean, it's exciting, isn't it, where these technologies are going? I mean, yes, absolutely. I mean, obviously, all of these life hacks, some people will find them um, suitable for them and some people maybe not but I think um, you would be able to do many people would be able to do this from their wheelchair or from an armchair um, even if it's just upper body exercising it looks it looks great fun but also as you say Jem you take us on to another topic there which we might look at another week about where virtual reality might take us yeah. not for fitness but for all sorts of different experiences that we may not be able to have in other in other ways you know whether it's to experience visiting a place or a space or i think it's got lots of exciting potential hasn't it definitely that looks i mean that looks like a lot of exercise as well <laughs> yeah it does doesn't it so well done al and thanks so much for sharing that thank you um, that and al said that's one of the ways that uh, he is staying well and a coping strategy really at, at this time of lockdown so that's excellent thank you i think we're going to turn to jen next to hear about a life hack and we don't know what this is this is an interesting and su surprising thing so jen over to you okay so i brought a bit of um, a game um i'll right. show you first so to just describe it it's a green floppy circle and mm. if you look closely, it's got like little ridges in it. Yep. Um, so do you want to guess first of all, and then I'll give you a clue. Uh, transporting pancakes. <laughs> transporting pancakes? No, yeah. it's too floppy. It needs, it needs a Is beret. Is it a beret? No, it's not a beret. I don't think that 
um, as fashionista would wear that. Uh, no. Well, you can pull off many things and most things, Gem, but not, no. No, it's silicon. Is it, it's not a coaster to stop tea from going places. Is it something non-slip? Is it something non-slip? Well, okay, so th the original um, reason is not that, mm. but my life hack was, yes, that's one of the things I use it for, is I put soap on top. So it doesn't slide. Brilliant. So that's one thing it does. Yeah. Um, I'll just tell you. It also it's a originally it's a dish dishcloth. So instead of like a sponge, you yeah. can wash your dishes. Um, it's more environmentally friendly. Right. Uh -huh. I wash my makeup brushes with them because of the bristles. Yes. You can, like wash them easily. It yeah. gets all the dirt out. So I yeah. can use like four things in one with just wow. silicon things. So that's that my life. Bit. Yeah, I can see it's got tiny little, as you say, tiny little, almost like little teeth on it, hasn't it? So it's slightly abrasive, but, but not harshly abrasive. That would work really well for all those yeah. things. One more thing oh. is you can open bottles and products. <gasps> yes. That's right as well. So yeah. opening things is a lot easier. Yeah, gives you some grip, extra grip, some traction yeah. and things. Yeah. That's a great thing. So where, where do you remember where you got it? Is it somewhere you can just get in a hardware shop or? Yeah, so I got it from Amazon. I can link it below yeah. and you get yeah. three in one. But there's quite a lot on, online if you search it. But yeah, silicone dishwasher. You <laughs> can get them in different colours? Yeah, different colours. I've got pink and blue and green. <laughs> Obviously pink. <laughs> I like, of course, you've got pink. I like the green one. It's very spring like. It's yeah. quite a colour, that, isn't it? It's lovely. Yeah. So that's mine. It's not very exciting, but I, got, I did get excited when I figured out all the different things that I could do with them. No, I think that's an excellent thing. And I think to have multi, multi functional objects is a, is, a great, is a great thing. Yeah. And I really don't like dirty sponges, you know, like when they're a bit grubby and you just, they're done. And you have to throw them away. Like these, yes. apparently, put them in the microwave, and the bacteria has gone off, and it's ready to use. Oh, really? That is interesting. Yes, yeah, sponges are har do harbour bacteria. You're right. Yes, we should be aware of that. Talking about non-slip, another non-slip theme. So my mother, who also has arthritis, I'm afraid, and she has a lot of pain with it, but she is trying to keep active while we're all in lockdown and so she's been doing she's been putting on the radio and doing some kind of dance exercise and she has found that one of the problems she has is that when she's kind of moving relatively vigorously around that it's quite jarring on her knees and her joints so what she has invented is she has got this microfiber um bath mat that's quite big and quite sort of thick and it's got a really nice non-slip base to it as well and she's been finding that if she does her exercises on that and even better if you put it on a carpet because then it really won't go sliding around as you move that it just cushions um, her movements when she's you know kind of bouncing up and down a little bit and I think for somebody who has arthritis um, or any condition where, you know, it's helpful to have, if you were in a gymnasium or a dance hall, it would have a slightly sprung floor, which meant that it wasn't so hard for you to move on. I think that's not a bad idea to, to try to so soften and cushion the floor when you're moving around. So that's, that's, a, that's a life hack from my mother. So thank you, Mrs. Beckett. I love that. And her other life hack, is I think a very practical one and I bet around the country people are doing this but it's a handy one. Obviously we're staying indoors aren't we as has been required of us and with Absolutely. good reason we're staying at home um, but sometimes we have deliveries don't we whether it's food whether it's our post whatever it might be and of course every time something comes into the house we are risking bringing this horrible virus in aren't we into our environments so my mum's got herself a pair of gloves and some anti-back 
spray or you could use wipes I guess if you've got them and some um, kitchen roll and she's got them ready by the door so that when anything arrives she can immediately just cleanse them and put them away with just that bit more confidence that um, she's doing all that she can to try to keep away from COVID-19. And I suspect that that's going on in your families as well, isn't it? We, we, well, we have a dedicated sprayer in the family yes. Who, yes. We, uh, who we bring out when any, any, any deliveries come. And uh, every morning when the milk arrives, quick, mm -hmm. spray the, quick spray the bottles outside, leave them yeah. for a little bit, then bring them in. And all the posts. Yeah. And, and that's the thing they say as well, isn't it? If you spray things, ideally to leave it rather than kind of wiping it off so that um, it just evaporates naturally. And apparently that gives better protection. So um, that's that's definitely a life hack for these awful times that we're living in, isn't it? Absolutely. Don't you think it'll be weird when like this is done? Well, done, whatever happens. And we don't have to do that anymore because we've become so like you to doing it i wonder if you know there'll be anxieties around not doing it well as a transition yeah. you could just get a standard bottle of water and just spray that around if you're feeling that you need to transition from antibacterial spray yeah to non-spraying non <laughs> it's interesting i don't normally spray antibac around everywhere under the sun because in different times they suggest you know not overusing it but right now i think there's a very good reason to be taking extra um care and extra precautions so yeah we will we will return to something like normal at one point sometime in the future and some of the things that we do will stay with us and some will be very glad to not have to do again won't we so Absolutely. have to see right so those are my mother's um contributions so thank you to her. Now, I think Miro has some, and um, I think this might, I, I just, I'm not sure where this is going to go. So, Jem, let's, let's wait. Why, why would you say that? Why, 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 would, why would I say this? I've got no idea. Right. I've got three from me and one from my partner, Emma. So okay. I'll, start, I'll start with mine, because I think you are all going to be mightily impressed with this. Okay. So I want you to picture the scene. Mm -hmm. you're, having a, you're having a dinner party post COVID-19, mm. your friends coming around and you've bought a particularly nice piece of fruit that you want to showcase to the guests when they come around. Right. So look at this. This is a bottle top <laughs> with an orange on top so you can yeah. showcase it either decoratively or mm. in anticipation of, for eating it. So again, if you've got a, if you've got a bottle of fizzy pop, if you've got a bottle of squash, bottle of water, just keep the lid, put it on the table, flip it over, make sure you flip it mm. over because otherwise mm. the, the fruit won't, won't stay. And you can just rest. I, I suggest an orange. Nothing looks better on the table than an orange in my view. And stick your mm. orange on top and then you can just showcase it. I see. I mean, I love the way two observations and then I will turn to Jem for hers. But one is that I love the way that you have matched the tablecloth to the to the orange it, that's very aesthetically pleasing. I was deliberate yeah. mm -hmm. I thought it would be and the other thing I really love about this is it's it's sculpture it's sculpture isn't it really Miro mm -hmm. it's 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 yes it's modern art gem observations I just want to know how you how this came about because yeah you know how lockdown you've got a lot more hours okay I'm gonna tell you mm. Mm. I was having my lunch and I said to Emma, could you get me a glass of squash, please? <laughs> and then as Emma went past the fruit bowl, I thought, Eureka, yeah. I've, got, I've got an idea. Stop mm. the lunch, Emma. <laughs> Let's just stop for a second. Pass oh, me the Emma. squash bowl, please, and the orange. <laughs> I've got an idea. And mm. that's how it develops. Thank you. And why, I don't know what you think, Gemma, but I feel privileged to be amongst the first um for this life hack to have been you know shared you know well, should, should i take you on to number two yes please do okay so again picture the scene you're sitting there could be a friday night could be a sunday could be a, mm. you know, a day after work could be a day after relaxing whatever you're doing mm. Mm. and you're sitting down to watch telly yeah and you think i want my sweets i want my snacks nearby but if I put them on the, if I put them on the side, they're going to roll around. Put them on the sofa, they might melt into the 
into the sofa. There's only a way I could keep my snacks close by. Mm -hmm. And this mm -hmm. is where I thought of this idea. <laughs> this is this is a hoodie. <laughs> and so you're wearing that you're wearing the back of the hoodie at the front. Right. And in the hood compartment, you mm -hmm. can store anything from Easter eggs. Yes. You can have popcorn in there if you wanted to. Is that an Easter egg? That is an Easter egg. That is a, an and, orange and Easter egg. Is this being modelled? We should. This is being modelled. Sorry, yeah. This is being modelled by Emma. Well, uh, wow. And again, this came from this. We were watching film. Well, we were, we were watching five films on Saturday, mm -hmm. and I kept saying to Emma, "If there's only, if there was only another way that I could store all my chocolates nearby, where I could just dip my head forwards." And just have a munch. Wow, and is, amazing! And you could—it could not just be chocolates; it could be toffees. It toffees, could, if you wanted to. It could be hula. Also. It could be hula hoops. You could try and get your oh, in the hula hoop. Oh, and now you're talking. Now you are anyway, talking. This has potential to be a, also a game that you could play as well. I'm loving it. Gem thoughts? I feel like this could be life changing, especially at the moment when I'm in one place. I can be surrounded by everything, whereas yeah. I just have it at my my reach all the time. I have to tell you, I think this ought to be patented. Yeah, I think this well, is my favourite so far. Yeah, it, it, okay. I, mean, I, I well. was impressed by the aesthetics of the first, but this one, in terms of life hack, this is astonishing. Do please tell us the third. Okay, let me ask you. Hang Harrod, have mm. you ever looked at the moon and thought, I wish my face was on the moon? <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what to say. Um, would you like me to say yes? No, just, just be honest with me. Um, well, I, I know that I have oftentimes commented and thought about the fact that I could see the man on the moon, you know, that I could see a face in on the moon. The moon. Um, I've not actually thought that I would like to see my own face there because that might be quite disturbing. But certainly I, I have looked at the moon and seen a face, yes. Okay, Jem, would you ever like to have your face on the moon? Um, never thought about it. Now you mention it, potentially it could be. Okay, well, oh, there you are, you see. So, yeah, okay, Jem would, yes, please. Okay, so there is, there is some interest. There, and of course, to any there is viewers, interest here. Any viewers or listeners, you know, hashtag moon face. So, there I was, brushing my mm. teeth in the bath, oh, and no. I was looking in the bathroom, Mm. And I saw an empty toilet roll, you know, the, you know the, the, the cardboard tube. And I thought, hold on, if you put that at the front of your camera on your phone mm. and then put your face at the other side of it and take a photograph, it looks like your face is on the moon. Would you like to have a look? <laughs> it absolutely does, Miro. Do, doesn't it? Yes. It does really, it? it's even got that, um, like an autumn moon you know where you get the kind of the kind of fuzzy light slightly misty light round the well, it, yeah because you have like the light don't you at the side here like the moon yeah. is shining yeah yeah wow. so, so this is called the moon tube but it's called the the moon tube do you know miro well i knew you were creative but this really this is just i'm lost in sociology aren't i i should be moving yeah, out I sociology think, to I art mean, shouldn't i obviously the sociological imagination and so on requires a good deal of imagination, but I think you have excelled here um, and that this will be very important um, for us to know that you have this additional and remarkable skill set. So thank, thank you. Thank you. And of course, if anybody wants to start a petition to get Miro's face on the moon, hashtag Miro Moon, <laughs> then please mm. do write to me and we can start some comments in the box. Right, do you want to see my last one? This is this is Emma's, and what she what you have here is a, is a pair of shoes. Well, shoes. Oh, it's a and very what, nice Emma, shoe. what Emma what Emma does to all her trainers, she removes the laces and right. puts drawstring in them. Oh, right. So then you don't have to tie them up, and you can just unloosen the unloosen here. Yes. Uh, in order to get yeah to get them black, so you can put your foot in, and then you just pull the cord to tighten them. And I love no, it. There is no need to tie shoes. So when Emma, this is, this is what Emma does when she's stumbling around at six o'clock in the morning trying to find her shoes before she's off to the labs. And, uh, and this is, yeah, this is a... What do you think, Jeff? I love it. Like, I spend too long trying to tie my shoes, so that could be... So, of course, you know, for timekeeping or for, you know, if you, if you find it difficult to tie your own shoelaces, this yeah. is just a, a useful way of just having 
uh, you know, a pull string. You just pull it, tighten your, sh tighten your laces, and then you're off. If you're in a rush, you can just... Yeah. Absolutely. I think it's, I think it's totally brilliant. And I also think it looks very good. And I think also with those natty socks, I presume that is the foot of Emma as well, which again, I think she's modelling this um, beautifully. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think that's outstanding. Well done. But, but, but it's not as good as the moon face, is it? Um, oh, that's a debatable point, mm. to be honest with you. But, you know, as your friend, we'll, we'll say the moon face absolutely is magnificent. Okay. It's, it, this is really one that comes from both Jem and from me. So when we were planning this episode, um, mm. we, we, we can say that we Googled, didn't we? Just to we did. do a bit of research and to find out. And I came across this and I thought, this is great for anybody mm. who, you know, wants to be in the kitchen and needs to do some cooking and follow a recipe. This is one that I made earlier. Oh, hey. And do you want to describe it? So here we have a coat hanger of the variety that one would um, purchase. I think usually skirts, sometimes trousers. Yeah. And basically um, what we discovered is that it's a very handy way that you can hook this onto a cupboard in your kitchen, add your favourite recipe or your printout from one of the many and myriad recipe websites, and then you can just use it. But well, shall we see it in situ and see how this how this looks in situ in my kitchen, um, Miro? Absolutely. Hold on. Thank you. Well, um, I mean, look at that. Now that's hanging off one of the cupboards, obviously, in my kitchen, right next to my stove, so that as I'm cooking, I can refer to it. And I think this is a very, very helpful hack. Absolutely. There you go. Thank you. Oh, wow. We have a Zoom as well. We do. And can I just say, can I, just before we go any further, can I just say thank yeah. you, Ang Howard, for turning off, your, turning off the plug that's not in use? So many people leave that plug on. <laughs> That's, that's my absolute pleasure. Why do you feel that that's important? Is it for danger or for electricity? Well, I'm always, well, I mean, I assume it saves electricity, but I'm always worried. You know, when, when I see that on at people's mm. houses, there's mm. a fe fe feeling of apprehension. Yeah, I agree. Always, always, never have your plugs on if you don't need them on, I agree. No. Back to this, if I might just, re if we might return to um, the screen now for all of us. What I'm thinking though, Gem, and I don't know whether you agree, Mira, is that really this requires some decoration. <laughs> and I would welcome ideas, again, in the box below, for things that I could perhaps um, provide as ornamentation, perhaps some cutouts of cardboard fruit, or maybe some herbs could be stuck on here. What no, I, we... I did take the mick out of this, didn't I? Because I just don't know how bored I'd have to be to stick herbs on plastic. Well, if you want to do that, you can. <laughs> well, I mean, there's a question, isn't there, Howard? Do people have the time to put herbs on there? The patience. I think that I think that's just the worst pun I've ever heard as well. Time, herb. Uh, well, I can pass over that if you want. Parsley over that. Parsley over it. Yeah. Okay, I think I think there's an urgent need for a script writer who can provide some jokes for that for Chinwag Central as well. But I think that many people and I welcome ideas about how to decorate this because I think this is a really good hack. But I'm going to use this also to segue into my final life hack, which is what to do if you want to make scones or scones, we're not going to return to that debate, and you haven't got any baking powder. <gasps> Here in York, where I live, you cannot get baking powder. There is no shop with baking powder. I think the people of York are probably baking cakes and scones a lot at the moment. Anyway, I look this up and I have found a really good hack for this. So basically, and also I will put the recipe down below. Basically, if you where you where you have some milk, you could either this is a good 
hack for if you've come to the end of the milk and the milk has gone off a little bit you know how sometimes you've got a bit of milk and it's not at its best and you shouldn't really drink it but you could cook with it or you can actually sour your milk by putting some fresh milk in the jug slightly warming it up and adding a couple of good, good squeezes of lemon juice which starts to actually curdle or sour the milk Gem is not impressed with this, but you don't, it doesn't taste, you don't taste it in the scone, but there's some kind of chemistry. And again, as a chemist listening who wishes to explain this, I would be very pleased to know why. But if you put that soured milk into self-raising flour, it will rise beautifully and you will not need baking powder. Wow. An outstanding hack. And here is the recipe which again, we will share so that if people want to have a go at the soured milk solution to scone making, if you haven't got any baking powder, they can give that a try. How did you find that out? Well, well, basically I Googled it. I don't know what we do without Google. I said, what can you do if there isn't any, if you haven't any baking powder? And they said, well, some lemon juice into milk and voila. And I thought, I'm not sure this is going to work, but it did beautifully. And I made some really lovely all butter scones. And I think they cheered me up immensely. Good bit of, I had some strawberry jam with them. Delicious. Jam Delicious. first and cream after, or cream first. Well, I'm afraid at the moment I don't have any cream. But if it was, if we were going to um, be having cream I think I would probably I mean to be honest I don't think I mind which way around it is do you have a preference I do but you go first jam first then the cream yes that's my I want to taste the cream first and then ease into the jam like yeah and what's your favorite flavor of jam Jem? oh um I like a raspberry you know Oh, me too. Mm. Mia, your favourite jam? I would rather have chocolate spread, I'm afraid. <laughs> On a scone? No, well, I'm not a major fan of scones, but I remember what? having uh, my favourite pancake filling is mm -hmm. butter, right? followed by uh, strawberry jam, right. followed by chocolate uh, spread. Oh, no. Oh, Miro. Okay. Well, okay. No comment. <laughs> Absolutely no comment. I suggest yeah. people try it. Butter, strawberry jam, and chocolate spread. And chocolate spread. Oh in a pancake. Goodness. In a pancake, roll it up, and then have your orange on display at the side. Oh, no. Oh, well, of course. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I don't know. It sounds like um, a heart attack in every bite, to be perfectly honest with you. I don't think we'd recommend it, but I suppose for an occasional treat, if that's what you like. Once a day. <laughs> Once a day, yeah. <laughs> Called the mirror buster. So we we started with that wonderful little film that was sent to us by Al, and we're going to end with um, a very interesting set of quarantine questions that have been sent to us by a good colleague of mine and friend, Oana, who is a psychologist. And she has recommended these as something that we might print out, maybe put on our fridge door and not feel pressured to think about. But nevertheless, we might find it helpful to think through some of these questions. And we thought we would share them with everybody. And here we have the questions. And here we have the questions. So these have been, I think they're, they're quite well researched as questions that it's really helpful um, for everybody to think about almost as an act of daily mindfulness or perhaps think of it as a little daily meditation and what Oana says is that it's not a must that we think about all of these questions or even any of these questions every day and we should give ourselves some praise a pat on the back as she puts it if we can answer any of them in any given day if you've had a bad day she says and you don't feel like you are very grateful for anything in the world at this moment then that's okay we have to be kind on ourselves and not see these as 
a sort of prescriptive list where if we can't answer them that day and we don't feel up to it that we've somehow failed but rather these are things that we might like to introduce into our thinking from time to time and that it will get us in the pattern of thinking through some more positive um, ideas so they are as follows there are six and the first one is what am i grateful for today the second one is who am i checking in on or connecting with today the third one i thought was really interesting actually um what expectations of normal in inverted commas am i letting go of today and i think we could interpret that in some interesting different ways how am i getting outside today is the fourth question it's very important to get some fresh air and sunlight and vitamin d isn't it the fifth one is how am i moving my body today and that's not prescriptive about how much we're moving or how we're moving but rather about keeping as active as we possibly can and there are lots of different ways to do that and finally this is a lovely one i think what beauty am i creating cultivating or letting into myself today in various ways so I wondered what you two thought when you saw those questions. Did you feel that they might be helpful? Do you feel you have answers to some of those? Absolutely. I thought, I thought they were really nice and gentle ways of, of starting a process of reflection. Um, yes. And also, if you're in, if you're in um, quarantine or you're, you know, you're in lockdown, in inverted commas, with, with family, then it's also a nice way of starting a conversation. Because so yeah. often we get trapped in talking about the same things, perhaps, or kind of the same routine and, and very functional questions of, have you done this? Have you, you know, have you done that? And this is a nice way of just exploring gently different mm. avenues of direction that can be taken through, um, through questions with your, with your, with your close ones in, in, the, in the house, which may then start up other interesting questions as well. Particularly, I thought, like, you know, like question, question one and three and, mm. and six, I thought are really, are really uh are really interesting in, in in terms of you know allowing us to think about beauty in different ways challenging the idea of what normal means and of mm. course you know what what we're grateful for i think is is a way of showing appreciation perhaps for ourselves in this time as well as appreciation that we may have of of others who may be doing things for us as well absolutely absolutely and i know there's been a lot of gratitude expressed in the country hasn't there to walk for the frontline workers and for um, the NHS and that's absolutely vital and I'm sure it's something that we all feel but thinking about what we're grateful for to even the most local you know local to us those around us or even those things about ourselves and the way that we're coping or things that we've learned about ourselves during this lockdown period, I think, um, you know, that can be a really positive thing as well to consider. What do you think, Gem? Any of these questions really jump out at you? Yeah, well, when we were reading them, I liked mm. question three, because yeah. I think I do this in an everyday way as well, like disability-wise, um, mm. you know, if my body's not doing what? it usually does or if I'm aching a little bit I do have to tell myself right my, I'm not going to be doing you know the normal things whether that's like doing a bit of makeup or curling my hair which makes me feel good um, mm. and it's kind of a check-in with yourself as well like allowing that to not happen and being okay about it so yeah I liked that because I think we're doing it even more now like there are yeah. so many things that is different um but i do think a lot of disabled people will be used to doing that already um which i have today like i am bare i'm in bed well not bare in bed but you know you have got clothes on i have got clothes on um but yeah it's it's accepting that things don't have to be normal right now and yeah. if all you can do is one thing then that's fine like you've done what you can so yeah i think that's really important that's about being and i know these these expressions can become almost cliche but i do think that that notion of being kind on yourself is important and what expectations that we have for ourselves about 
let's say levels of productivity at this time or yeah. as you say um you know what we would normally in inverted commas expect of ourselves in whatever way i think we can afford to be a little bit kind on ourselves and less demanding um but also as you said as disabled people perhaps you and um nero have been challenging those expectations of normal and because they're awfully constraining aren't they rather i think it was marilyn monroe that said actually normal is boring which i always think is 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 a fun way of putting it but actually as we know normal can be something that is a very oppressive concept as well so you two have been challenging that idea in very many ways i think over over your lifetimes haven't you as people who are very disability rights aware disability awareness aware and so on so i thought that one we had lots of different potential that question yeah i do think it's hard though like it's not natural it was hard for me to to have that mindset and i think it, you don't just flick a switch it brings its challenges yeah it brings challenges to um to question the norm to to exist in ways that are not what is um, considered to be the average or and so on. And the world is, of course, constructed around a certain mythical idea of the norm or the ideal, isn't it? That really, I think, um, is quite damaging for all of us in many ways, but which perhaps at times in your life, you felt that quite, felt that quite acutely as well. So it's not, it's not just an easy thing, is it? No. no. I also think as well, I, I, my, you know, when I, when I was kind of uh, starting to become critically aware of what does it mean to be a disabled person in society and so on to politicize my experiences of, uh, of, of being a disabled person, what I, what I found, well, again, this is just my, my, my view, was that normal doesn't exist. You know, it's a false notion. Um, mm. and as you said, you know, people, people build and organize themselves around this false idea that there is a norm, there is a normal way of being and thinking and and functioning, um, but of course disabled people disrupt that idea of of what normal is, um, mm -hmm. and even you know if you think about moving towards the process of isolation, you know disabled people have been for years showing how to work dif you know work in different ways and varied ways, mm -hmm. communicate in varied ways, access services in in various ways. Which have been a way, which have been an attempt to disrupt the notion of norm, of normality. So, you know, I think disrupting normality is important, and I think using this opportunity for all of us, disabled and non-disabled people, to disrupt those expectations and those those existing ideas of conforming to the standard is uh, is really significant in the, in this period of time. So only time will tell, won't it, how the world will have changed through this experience of um working in different ways connecting in different ways doing friendship in different ways doing care in different ways none of which has been normal in inverted commas um so we shall see whether a new normal emerges as there's lots of talk about that term isn't there but really whether we can harness this most awful of situations that we we find ourselves in and that's not to say that there's any silver lining to it because when people are losing loved ones there's no silver lining yet we i hope that we can capture some of the positive things that have come out of this experience and take them forward so that would be my hope under both question three but also Question six, I think, you know, doing the kind of work that we're doing right here, right now, which is creative. I think it's, it's a beautiful thing to have friends. So I think that that's, that's us letting beauty in to, to this day and hopefully sharing that with others as well, because we do want to, to welcome people to contact us, to chat with us, share their thoughts as well. We'd love to hear from people, wouldn't we? Definitely. Absolutely. Okay, well, I think that we're coming to the end of, of Chinwag Central today. The next time we'll be talking about gardening. Now, mm -hmm. uh, we've got a selection of things for us to enjoy next time. We're going to have a recorded tour of, of Jem's uh, garden, complete with the interesting no notion of the bridge. Yeah, we'll leave there for people. don't say anything more. Not say anything more. 
surprise. I'm going to be doing an interview, a one-on-one -on -one exclusive uh, mm -hmm. with Dave Griffiths, who also happens to be my father, a keen gardener. And he'll yes. be talking to me about his ideas and top tips for gardening uh, over the summer period. Uh, mm -hmm. And we're also going to have a DIY uh, special from Ang Harrod, who will yes. be talking us through what, what exactly are you making, Ang Harrod? Well, I will be uh, making plant pots using toilet roll, the centre of toilet roll tubes. So I'm sure that that will have whetted the appetite of our listeners. And uh, if they have any thoughts, again, please put them in the comments below and we will try to pick them up in future sessions. But for now, shall we say cheerio to everybody from Chinwag Central? Thank you for listening. Thank, Thank you, you for listening. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>